My friends, I had a really busy weekend. Almost nothing to do with music. A little bit, just just a little bit. But uh, mostly, I uh, worked on uh, metal detecting and a uh, few other little odds and ends that people wouldn't normally do. I'll tell you all about it right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, November 7th. After the shop talk on this Friday, I plan to take a about a 10-day vacation. Uh, it'll be the full length of the Missouri deer season, rifle deer season, that is. You know, I will do some hunting, but mostly just to, you know, cut back and relax and go out in the woods and just sit there and watch stuff. I love to do that. I, I just really do love to sit out in the woods. I'll be mostly looking for the wild boar and the coyotes because we have our share of both of those. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. Just in case anybody, you know, is going like this on that, uh, the last coyote I shot was so diseased that he wouldn't have made it through the winter anyway. He literally had no hair on his body except for the tips of his ears and on the tip of his tail. Uh, whenever there's an overabundance of coyotes, they get real diseased, especially with the mange and things like that. So you can say what you want, but if you don't control the population of certain animals, they'll control it themselves in, in a much more brutal way. And so that's why I do what I do. Plus the fact that when you have so many coyotes like we do, it just, the little rabbits and the squirrels and all those things really suffer. I mean, they really suffer because the hawks and things prey on those animals as well. So between the coyotes and the hawks, they just don't have a chance. So I do what I do because of I love the outdoors. I love nature and all that. So you can say what you want, but maybe you just don't understand the full process. And I might just add, man has screwed up the process, so we have to do what we can to try to fix it. In other words, we've killed off all the wolves, therefore the coyotes don't have a natural predator. Okay, enough on all that. We did a lot of fun things. I went out and I got that hornet's nest. <laughs> My wife said, it's going to be really super windy the next couple of days. You better get that hornet's nest or it's going to get tore up flopping around because there's no leaves on the trees now. And the wind would hit it directly and swing it around a lot. So I thought, it hasn't really been cold enough long enough yet. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So I went out there and I watched it for about five minutes. I didn't see any activity. So I went over and I sawed off the limbs. There was two main limbs that it was hanging on. Small, you know, like the size of your little finger or smaller. And uh, so I sawed those off and carried it over to the garage, hung it up with a string inside the garage just to let it air out for a few days. I was going to put it in a plastic bag, but I could see there it was pretty much over with. Well, sure enough, Two hornets did crawl out uh, after it was in the garage, but I think they were probably uh, new hatches and they were probably very young hornets and they just more or less fell on the ground. The hornet's nests make a beautiful uh, you know, ornament to hang like in a corner of, of like, if you have an outdoor type room, you know, like I do, I, you know, I have my man cave is kind of outdoor themed. So it'll be kind of cool to hang it up in the corner of the uh, log cabin type deal. And it'll look pretty neat. So here's what it looks like hanging in the garage. Hope you enjoyed that picture. It's kind of cool to see what nature can produce. And uh, I mean, it took a lot of work to make that big nest. <laughs> it really did. You stop and think about that. That's all pretty much chewed up leaves and, you know, grasses and things like that. And then uh, then they regurgitate it basically and into making it into paper, really, is really what it boils down to. Um, it's just basically paper. Then Saturday, uh, surprise, surprise, my brother showed up. I didn't know he was coming. And he brought his metal detector and the two of us went back there Saturday most of the day and we found some amazing finds. One of them is an 1880s Anheuser-Busch 
piece of memorabilia that I doubt anybody watching this has ever seen. Unfortunately, it's just a partial piece, but it's enough that you can pretty much tell what it is. And uh, we were able to find it on the internet and uh, it's pretty cool. It was made in the 1880s is what they, is what the claim was on the picture on the internet. Uh, I'm not going to give that away today. I'm going to make a separate video and show all those finds. I also found uh, a pocket knife that is pretty darn old. It kind of looks modern, but I'm pretty sure the way it's made, it was probably made in the late 1890s to maybe early 1910s, somewhere in there. That's my guess. Can't tell who actually made it, but I've been looking and I haven't really found an exact match on the internet yet. So it's pretty cool. Found lots of other stuff, just all kinds of uh, farm type stuff that you would expect to find on a farm. Yeah, there's just so much I'm not even going to go into it. I found tons of shotgun shells. I was basically cherry picking for coins. And the shotgun shells fall in that coin signal. So it was just the little shotgun shell head stamp that I was finding. But the cool thing about a lot of those, not all of them, but a lot of them, you can date. And almost all of them that I found date from the 1890s. Really cool. And it just goes on and on. I mean, we literally found hundreds of pieces already. And there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of signals that we didn't even try to dig. I, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I mean, just you can't move your coil. You can't move it that far without hitting something. It's just ping, 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 ping everywhere. So I was cherry picking, trying to isolate coin signals and really never did even hit a coin signal. Not one single one. Uh, the ones that I was digging were marginal that could have possibly been coin signals, but they were shotgun shells. That's about where I'll leave that for right now. Look for a video coming out and I'll bet you money you've never seen this Anheuser-Busch memorabilia piece unless you're an Anheuser-Busch collector. I mean, if you really are a collector, then yeah, you might have seen it. Your collection would have to go back into the 1880s <laughs> to find this piece. Well, that's about it for today. I don't have much in the way of music other than I got to get on this Gibson guitar that's hanging up here and uh, see what I can do about that. And uh, I'll tell you more about that on tomorrow's vlog. Again, just a reminder that after the shop talk on Friday, I'm going to be taking a, about a 10 day vacation. So that's why I'm going to try to get a lot done this week. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>